Okay, so we're ready to wrap up fraction arithmetic. The last topic to tackle is division. Okay. Now, um, you've probably learned the rule of this mantra at some point, right? Um, that division is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. All right, so you, you flip and multiply. Some people like to say it, right? So if you're, if you're giving a formula, and again, I'm questioning whether we really should, but here we go. A over B divided by C over D. You flip the second and you multiply. Yeah. That's the rule. Um, so, for example, if I was going to do something like two-thirds and I wanted to divide by, um, well, let's say, I don't know, um, four-ninths, okay? How do we do that? Well. Maybe we should spend some time, if we had more time, we might try to think a little bit conceptually about how this makes sense, right? Uh, there are lots of ways to understand why this rule works, okay? Um, if, you, if you think of division as canceling a multiplication, right, um, then this kind of makes sense, right? C over D and D over C, they're opposites of each other in the sense that if you multiply them, you get one, okay? Um, more basic than that, you can go into thinking of a division as counting like how many times does one number go into another, things like that, right? Um, but these kind of basic, kind of getting into these core concepts of, of fractions and fraction addition is, is, I think, maybe a little lower than we can go in a calculus review. There's lots of good material out there on the web if you wanted to do it. Um, but I think this is a good one to, to look at because you'll notice that you kind of, when you're doing division, the way we tend to write things in, in like calculus, you get these compound fractions, right? Fractions within a fraction, right? The numerator and the denominator of this fraction are themselves fractions. And you have to think about how do you simplify. When you write this out, what goes where? Um, so the rule says, well, what you should do is multiply by this, the reciprocal of the one on the bottom, okay? So instead of dividing by four over nine, you multiply by 9 over 4. Okay? Now you can multiply that out, or you can, uh, you can again, notice that, hey, there's, there's a bit of simplifying I can do here. 9 over 3 is just 3. Uh, 2 over 4 is a half. Okay? And so the result is, is 3 over 2. Okay. That's not so bad. Um, you if you remember the rule, this is probably one of these cases where, um, you know, it's nice if you have a deeper conceptual understanding of what's going on here. It might help you later on if you're studying algebra or something like that. But if you're just trying to get the calculation done, remember the rule. Um, where this is going to come up with, uh, say, with calculus um, is you might be dealing with an expression like the following. You might be dealing with something like this. Um, 1 over x plus a minus 1 over x divided by a. Okay? And you want to simplify this thing. And this really tends to trip people up. It messes people up because they're like, wait, that's a fraction, that's a fraction. Wait, but it's inside this bigger fraction. And I don't know where that A is supposed to go. Like, where the hell does it go? Um, so if you remember that division is multiplying by the reciprocal, and if you remember that, you know, now this might be a real number. It might not even be a fraction anymore. But the rules still work. And, and so for any, for any real number, you can still write down the reciprocal of a real number, right? Um, if you have some number x and you want to take its reciprocal, 
It's just 1 over that number. So what we do here is say, okay, rather than dividing by a, we'll multiply by 1 over a. Okay? Now it becomes a little bit more clear how to proceed if we wanted to simplify. Okay? And this is the sort of thing you're going to have to do. This is going to come up when you're using limits to calculate derivatives. This is actually a fairly standard example that I'm doing for you. Um, so the next thing we do, well, we'd have to combine these, right? Again, common denominator. In this case, that common denominator is going to have to be the product. So I'm going to have to multiply this one, top and bottom, by x. I have to multiply this one, top and bottom, by x plus a. Um, and coming all the way back to one of our very early videos, we talked about order of operations, and you probably thought I was being silly because, hey, you, you learned order of operations like way back in elementary school, right? You don't need to cover that. Here's another place where people are going to screw up because a lot of people are going to apply this minus sign to the x but not to the a because they don't realize that there's actually, again, these implied parentheses there. We often don't bother to write those parentheses, but they're there. And it becomes relevant when we go to the next step because in the next step, and now we can kind of, the whole denominator is going to be the a times the x times the x plus a. So we have a times x times x plus a, and we have x subtract x plus a, right? So that minus sign hits both of them, right? Minus x minus a, right? It gets distributed to both of those terms. And if you're not careful, you might miss the minus sign on the a. x minus x cancels. You just get negative a over a times x times x plus a. And the last thing you might choose to do is realize that this is just minus 1 times a, and then say, hey, I've got an a on the top, I've got an a on the bottom, so why don't I cancel and get down to a final answer of minus 1 over x times x plus a. Okay? You'll definitely be seeing like calculations like that. Once you move on, once you move on to limits, derivatives, you're going to be seeing these sorts of things. As long as you're careful, right, and as long as you remember that when you're dividing, that really means multiplying by the reciprocal, you'll get things in the right place and you'll be okay, right? A lot of people, you know, the two com most common pitfalls here might be that the a ends up in the numerator when it should have been in the denominator. And you might forget something simple like order of operations, distributive property, forgetting that there are really brackets there. Okay. All right. That's it for fractions. Um, we're going to move on.